Thank you very much, Ryan, and welcome. Uh, my name is John Bykowski. I'm the president of the American Association of Individual Investors, and I'll be acting as the moderator tonight. So I'll be looking at the questions panel, and I'll be uh, passing on those questions to Wayne. And uh, joining us tonight is Wayne Thorpe. Wayne Thorpe uh, is the vice president here at the American Association of Individual Investors, and he heads up our research and analysis group. Uh, welcome, Wayne. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what that, that, that particular role uh, entails? Well, thank you, John, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, so uh, in that role, uh, I oversee uh, over all of our premium products. So that would be uh, our portfolio products, such as uh, dividend investing, VMQ, uh, and the Stock Superstars Report. Uh, I work with uh, Charles and Derek, who are the uh, respective lead analysts on that. Uh, I'm also the program manager of Stock Investor Pro, as well as A Plus Investor. Uh, and then uh, amongst my um, my enormous free time, uh, I'm always looking to uh, the ways in which I can be improving these products, as well as working uh, with you, John, and our, our marketing team and our technology team uh, to try to identify ways in which we can be enhancing these products to provide the greatest value uh, to our subscribers and to our members, as well as trying to uh, plot out a course for any uh, future product development. Thank you. Sounds like you wear quite a few hats there at the association. And uh, But I guess tonight you're going to be tackling uh, a, a question that we get quite often. In fact, I'm not sure if the question came up more because we created the, the special model portfolios tab on our website. But you know, at, at the association over the years, we've given um, members many illustrative uh, ways to invest. I know years ago we had something even called the Shadow 440, and now we have the Model Shadow Stock Portfolio. Um, so uh, I guess your goal tonight is, is, is what exactly? Uh, my goal tonight is to A, provide an overview of the AAI model portfolios. Uh, I'm sure, especially if you're a regular reader of the journal, you're probably very familiar with our Model Shadow Stock Portfolio, uh, depending on whether or not uh, you read our marketing uh, emails and whatnot, you may to a lesser extent be familiar with our dividend investing stock superstars report in VMQ stocks uh, portfolios. But, you know, we have all of these different portfolios, which if I math is correct, contain roughly about 120 uh, different stocks running a uh, gamut as far as, uh, you know, the smallest of the small micro cap companies to uh, the mega tech, you know, Microsofts of the world uh, covering a diverse set of uh, investment styles. Uh, so we get a question quite a bit is like, you know, you offer a lot of this information, you offer some really good ideas when it comes to investing in individual stocks, but how do I do this all, to, how do I blend this all together? So beyond just covering and doing an overview of our different model stock portfolios, I then want to use, uh, for example, our AI asset allocation model, uh, and some other tools that AI presents and show our members and our viewers tonight how they can be picking stocks from these different portfolios covering, again, disparate market caps, styles, et cetera, and be able to pull those together into a more cohesive overall stock investment, uh, stock uh, portfolio. Okay, I know it's very important to have a, a general plan in, in mind, uh, have a sense for your time horizon, your risk tolerance, and overall asset allocation and then try to figure out how these different uh, portfolios and strategies fit together. Well, I'm gonna be uh, fading back into the uh, the background here. Uh, my understanding is that we're gonna take questions at the end of tonight's presentation, but if something should come up in the questions panel, I'll, I'll, I'll interrupt you, Wayne, and, and seek some clarification. I wanna remind our uh, people tuning in tonight that we are recording this, and tomorrow you'll be getting an email with uh, a link to the video recording as well as a link to any information, any special websites or bits of information that Wayne mentions that are not covered in his presentation handout. So with that, Wayne, I'm gonna turn it over to you and uh, I'll be here in the background uh, looking for good questions to stump you, Wayne, so. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. Look forward, look forward to hearing them. <laughs> so yes, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's uh, AAII Webinar Wednesday event. Uh, so as John and I uh, were talking a little bit earlier, uh, the, the main focus tonight is our model stock portfolios uh, and how an individual investor can look at these different portfolios and try to pull them in together to uh, satisfy the stock allocation of their individual stock portfolios. But before I get into this tonight, uh, I want to try to spend a little time to dispel some of the myths regarding uh, investing in individual stocks and offer a rebuttal to those who think that individual investors are actually better off focusing on mutual funds uh, or ETFs. 
Since AAII's founding in 1978, our mission has been to provide quality, unbiased investor education to help people such as yourselves achieve their financial goals. Steeped in this is a strong belief that investors don't have to just invest in e mutual funds or ETFs. And in fact, with the proper education, information, time, interest, and discipline, individual investors can manage stock portfolios that outperform many mutual funds net of fees. To be fair, there are investors out there that are probably better off sticking to with mutual funds or ETFs. They may not have the time necessary to manage a stock portfolio, or they don't have the knowledge or the confidence to do so. For them, mutual funds and ETFs are probably better avenues to the stock market. Investing in individual stocks does take time that many of us don't want to have, either they don't, we don't have or we don't want to devote to managing a stock portfolio. Another key ingredient to successfully investing in individual stocks is discipline. No matter what type of investor you are, as John alluded to, it's very important that you have a plan that fits your financial goals, your time horizon, and risk tolerance. However, to be truly successful, you need to have the discipline to follow that program once you've committed to it. In recent years, many investors have been led to believe that they're fighting an uphill losing battle with the big boys of Wall Street. Popular books such as Flash Boys has perpetuated the notion that individual investors can't compete with the deep pockets and high technology of institutional traders and investors. So why, as an individual investor, should you think about an investment path that involves investing in individual stocks? Well, I'm here tonight to tell you that you do have tremendous advantages over institutions, and these advantages make it possible to outperform the overall market. Several years ago, John wrote an excellent article making the case for a do-it-yourself approach to investing in stocks. In that article, he touched on several areas where individual investors have a leg up on institutional investors, which gives them the ability to beat out the Wall Street big boys. And I'd like to take a little time to touch on a few of these advantages. <clears throat> First and foremost, individual investors have a level of flexibility, flexibility and nimbleness most institutional investors can only dream of. In contrast, as this picture shows, managing some mutual funds is like turning an aircraft carrier, which as most of us know, you can't do on a dime. So you, as an individual, you can own as many or as few stocks as you wish. Institutional investors, on the other hand, face several constraints that limit not only the number, but as well as the size of the stocks they own, as well as the timing of their transactions. Due to redemption demands, institutional investors, such as mutual funds and ETFs, may be forced to sell when the market is falling, meaning they may miss out on bargain shopping opportunities. Individuals have much greater control over when to buy and sell their, institution, uh, their positions. The flexibility individual investors enjoy, enjoy when investing in stocks also means that for the most part, they can buy and sell without impacting the underlying bid ask spread which is the difference between the price at which you sell a stock and the price at which you buy a stock. Because of the large amounts of money that many institutional investors are moving into and out of stocks, they must consider liquidity, which is the ability to buy and sell stocks quickly without having a tremendous impact on prices. This forces institutional investors to focus on larger stocks that everyone else already owns. Realistically, most institutional investors are limited to the largest 1,000 or 2,000 companies, such as the Russell 1000 stocks or the S&P 1500. Because of the asset allocation rules placed upon most mutual fund, placed upon mutual fund companies, the larger the mutual fund, the larger the companies they must invest in. Therefore, the bigger the equity fund, the harder it becomes to outperform the competition as they're forced to concentrate their holdings amongst the largest companies. But research and real money returns show that the best long-term returns come from investing in microcap stocks that are well outside the universe of investable stocks for institutional investors. And this is the basis of the model shadow stock portfolio I will discuss a little bit later. Another important benefit of managing your own stock portfolio is the ability to time trades to yield the greatest tax benefits. Most mutual funds are focused on pre-tax returns and may saddle investors with a substantial annual capital gains tax bill, 
even if they haven't held the fund for very long or if they've not sold any shares. However, if you manage your own stock portfolio, you control the stocks you sell and when, which means you have some control over your tax bill. You can even look at your holdings at the end of the year and do some selective tax loss harvesting, which could offset a capital gains tax liability. So having touched on some of the advantages that individual investors have and which makes investing in individual stocks attractive, I now actually want to dive into the AAII's four model, st model stock portfolios. The model shadow stock portfolio, dividend investing, the stock superstars report, and VMQ stocks. This table here summarizes the differences between the four AAII model stock portfolios. One thing they do have in common though, is these are all real money portfolios. They're managed by AAII, AAII analysts, and any performance that we report for these portfolios are based on actual transactions, taking into account commissions, bed ask spreads, et cetera. The model shadow stock portfolio is a benefit of AAII membership and is accessible to all members. Dividend investing, the stock superstars report, and VMQ stocks are premium services. As you can see here on this table though, we show the number of holdings being held currently in each portfolio, the schedule for reviewing holdings to make possible portfolio changes, the average annual turnover, which drives then the average number of buy and sell trades each year, as well as the average holding period. So looking at this table, you get an idea, again, as the size of the portfolio, how often you'd have to be monitoring this portfolio to be able to capture any changes we make to the portfolio, as well as turnover, average number of trades each year, and the average holding period. So let's start with the model shadow stock portfolio. This is probably, at least in my opinion, and I'm not don't have actual facts behind this, but I firmly believe that this is probably one of the very first factor portfolios in existence. And is definitely probably one of the longest continuously run factor portfolios out there dating back to 1993. For me though, the model shadow stock portfolio best encapsulates AAI's mission in helping individual investors become better managers of their own assets. AAI's founder, Jim Cloonan, developed the model shadow stock portfolio to codify persuasive academic theories into a set of straightforward, practical selection and trading rules that an individual investor could follow with minimal effort or time commitment. The portfolio has also allowed us to share the problems and procedures of managing a portfolio of small stocks using a quantitative approach. In 1992, Eugene Fama and Kenneth French published groundbreaking research showing that very small companies with very low valuations perform better than large companies with higher valuations. They also discovered that this intersect of microcap and value perform better than merely focusing on very small companies or very low valuations individually. And we can see here this table actually shows a summary of the data that was published in 1992 by Fama and French. And they did a back test from July 1963 to December 1990. And what they did was they broke down stocks by deciles based on the price to book ratio, as well as deciles by market capitalization. And you can see here, as we move from left to right, that the higher the, <clears throat> the higher the, I'm sorry, the lower the price to book ratio, the higher the, the average monthly return was. Likewise, as we went from the largest stocks to the smallest stocks, the average monthly return also increased. So we can see here that the lowest price to book stocks averaged a 1.63 monthly return and and the smallest stocks based on market capitalization averaged 1.47 percent on a monthly basis over the back testing period but when you combine the absolute smallest companies and those with these lowest valuations you actually boosted your returns to 1.92 percent on a monthly basis over the back testing period from 63 to 1990. And based on this research, in 1993, Jim Cloonan created the beginner's portfolio, which morphed into the shadow stock portfolio over time, 
to test Fama and French's research in the real world. Here we can see on this particular slide, this is a subset of the holdings of the current model shadow stock portfolio. <clears throat> the portfolio follows a rules-based approach for both selecting and removing stocks from the portfolio. In order to be considered for the model shadow stock portfolio, a company must be in the bottom 10% of market capitalization, as well as the bottom 10% of price to book ratio, using levels of New York Stock Exchange listed stocks. They must also have positive earnings over the trailing four quarters. So again, we're looking for that intersect of the 10% smallest companies and the 10% lowest valuation based on the price to book ratio. Now these values will adjust over time as the market rises and falls. So this is very much a living, breathing methodology. Periodically, we will adjust the valuation and size requirements for the model shadow stock portfolio. And this is currently been done by John Bykowski, who is the lead analyst and manager of the portfolio. Here we see again on this slide, we have a notes column, which provides useful information when you're trying to evaluate any potential actions that might be taking place with a given stock. We can see here that we indicate whether a company's adjusted trailing 12 month earnings is positive, whether it is on earnings probation, which is a sign that there could be a possible sell on that stock based on what happens in its next quarterly earnings release, whether it actually qualifies or not, or if, it, for example, if it's nearing a size limit or valuation limit. Each quarter, these current holdings are evaluated based on their valuation, market capitalization, and trailing 12-month earnings. And this evaluation normally takes place in early February, May, August, and November. Beyond the 29 stocks that are currently in the portfolio, we also publish an ideas list that's updated each day with those stocks that are currently meeting the initial selection criteria for the model shadow stock portfolio. Now it's important to keep in mind there's no guarantee that the stocks that appear on any of these idea lists will end up in the actual portfolio. So if you happen to select a stock from an ideas list, it's up to you, assuming that it's not added to the actual portfolio at some point in time, it's up to you to decide when it's time to remove the stock from your portfolio based on uh, the shadow stock rules. And here we can see on this slide that we provide explicit, straightforward buy and sell rules for the model shadow stock portfolio. This is extremely rules based. Uh, we try to remove any emotion, any ambiguity from the buy and sell process. It is very quantitative rules based. Uh, which I've discovered over my almost quarter century of investing really does add that essential discipline uh, that most of the successful investors that you run across have. It's that discipline. We issue alerts when we make changes to the portfolio on both the website and via email. Listening to our members who are interested in income generating portfolios, we launched the dividend investing portfolio in 2012. This portfolio consists exclusively of dividend paying stocks with a focus on stocks with dividend yields that are greater than the overall market, as well as above their historical levels. We also look for stocks with a history of dividend increases that appear capable of continuing that trend moving forward. Currently the portfolio, well actually, the, the portfolio will always hold 24 stocks. <coughs> And this current slide shows a subset of some of the stocks in this portfolio. Whereas when you look at the model shadow stock portfolio and the stocks that are in that portfolio, chances are you're probably not gonna recognize many of those names being those stocks that are in the shadows of Wall Street. Whereas when you look at the dividend investing portfolio, you're gonna see stocks that you're probably very familiar with. IBM, Principal Financial, Comerica Incorporated, Walgreens, International Paper, PepsiCo, et cetera. So these are you know, blue chip companies basically that have a history of dividend payments uh, and are poised to be able to hopefully continue that trend moving forward. So we've gone from, again, the shadow stock portfolio, very small micro cap value to the dividend investing portfolio, which is exclusively all 24 companies pay a dividend. A company has to pay a dividend to be in the portfolio. And because of the 
history of dividends and everything like that, these tend to be much larger uh, companies. Just as we had with the shadow stock portfolio, we also have a dividend ideas area for dividend investing. And each day, these, this listing is updated to provide a listing of companies that have a long history of dividend payments, a history of increasing their dividends, positive free cash flow, and reasonable yield based on historical norms. While companies on this list, again, may be added to the actual DI portfolio at some point in time, there's no guarantee that they actually will. A recent enhancement to dividend investing is a dividend grader. And this tool actually allows uh, dividend focused investors to identify and value, evaluate roughly 2000 dividend paying stocks. This is an exclusive to dividend investing subscribers. And with it, you can evaluate companies based on valuation, growth, and dividend strength. And these grades are updated on a daily basis. The Stock Superstars report was AAII's first foray into more mainstream directed portfolios for our members. Uh, and actually uh, been involved with it from day one uh, back in 2002. Uh, at the time, uh, many, of our, many of our members were saying that they didn't have the time or the confidence to manage a stock portfolio entirely on their own. So what we did is we looked at the 60 or so different stock screening strategies that we track at AII that now we have almost 25 years of data on. And we looked for strategies from Wall Street superstar investors that are performed consistently well over all market conditions. And what we did at the time and what we continue to do today is take four strategies that have a good long have good long term performance, but a relatively low correlation with each other, which means that if one strategy is down, uh, hopefully there'll be one that will offset the losses in in the in in that one, uh, or at least if there is losses in one, the magnitude may not be as significant uh, in another one of the portfolios. So the SSR portfolio is actually four separate portfolios, each following a distinct methodology. And these methodologies are based on the superstars, William O'Neill, which you may know from the Canslem approach, David Dremen, who is a value and estimate revisions and surprises strategy, James O'Shaughnessy, Jim O'Shaughnessy, who's factor-based uh, and looks for, uses factors to look for companies that have deep value, financial strength and earnings quality. And lastly, John Neff, the former uh, money manager, uh, who followed a contrarian value and fundamental growth, fundamental growth approach. While these four investors served as the inspiration for the approaches that we use, they're solely AAII's interpretation of their methodologies, which have been presented in books, articles, and academic papers. So none of these individuals had anything to do with the actual strategies or selection methodologies that we're using for these four portfolios. And as I mentioned, for the last several years, I've been managing the, uh, the portfolio and been serving as the lead analyst. So the target number of holdings in the SSR portfolio is 40. That breaks down to 10 per portfolio group. Uh, we try to keep that 10 uh, across all four groups. Sometimes market conditions do prevent us from replacing a stock that we remove uh, due to a lack of candidates. Uh, but here you can see uh, a subset of the listings in the Group 1 O'Neill portfolio. Uh, we have portfolio groups for each of the four uh, methodologies. So here you can see, for example, in Group 1, we hold Adobe, uh, PayPal, uh, Advanced Micro Devices, uh, Monster Beverage. Uh, we also own Etsy, uh, Morningstar, um, not Morningstar, sorry, Microsoft. Uh, but these, uh, the Group 1 methodology, looks for high growth, high momentum stocks, but you have the ability to have a breakdown of each of these port, uh, groups uh, based on their portfolio group. Uh, and I'm gonna skip over those, but those uh, other groups slides are, are included in, in the handout. I also maintain vetted watch lists for each of the four portfolio groups. So unlike the ideas list we provide for the auto the other model portfolios, which are purely quantitative, the SSR watch lists undergo both quantitative and qualit qualitative evaluations done by myself. So they tend to be a little more static. And these watch lists are intended to be feeders for the actual portfolios, should I need to replace a stock that I sell. Finally, we have the newest addition to the AI model stock 
model, model stock portfolio stable, VMQ stocks. And this is managed by AI journal editor, Charles Roteblood. Uh, VMQ stocks was launched in 2018, and it is also built on academic research and real world successes. The portfolio uses three invest, investment factors that have been shown to identify stocks that outperform the market over the long term. And these are value, momentum, and quality. For VMQ stocks, we developed grades for these three factors to simplify and normalize the evaluation process. Building on the research of Jim O'Shaughnessy, the value and quality grades are composites that combine several financial metrics that help evaluate a company's value and quality. The idea behind using a composite is that, like investment strategies, certain financial metrics fall into and out of favor. Using a composite smooths out the variation in individual metrics and provides a more comprehensive view of a company's fundamentals. The momentum grade is based on the weighted price momentum of a stock over the last four quarters. The VMQ portfolio selects stocks that are at the intersection of attractive valuation, lower score the better, above average quality and above average price momentum. In order to be considered for the VMQ stocks portfolio, a company must have a value, momentum and quality grade of A or better. So here we can see a partial listing of the current holdings in the VMQ stock portfolio. And there's actually a good mix of stocks in the VMQ portfolio, VMQ stocks portfolio. Uh, you will inevitably find some stocks that you probably know, uh, where you might also find some more hidden gems uh, as well that are maybe smaller in size. Again, we also offer a VMQ ideas listing. This is again updated daily use the using the quantitative requirements to be considered for the actual VMQ stocks portfolio. Like all the other idea watch idea lists and watch lists, this data is updated daily. The VMQ analyzer, which is exclusive to VMQ stocks, shows you how a stock rates according to the VMQ stocks approach. You can run in the, run this analysis on over 6300 US listed stocks. Here we can see a stock's value grade and score, the momentum score and grade, and the quality score and grade prominently displayed. Below this, which you can't see, but if you were to scroll down, you see that you would see the explanation of these factors that are influencing the scores and the overall grade. Stocks are assigned scores and grades based on quantitative analysis. The most attractive stocks have a value score of zero to 40, a momentum score of 61 to, 40, 61 to 100, and a quality score of 61 to 100. Stocks with this combination of scores appear on the VMQ stock ideas list, as well as meet the standards to be include, included in the actual portfolio. So I've gone through the four portfolios, uh, given you a, a bit of an overview, uh, probably had to skim over a little bit. Uh, realistically, uh, a, a good discussion of each of those portfolios could easily take uh, their own 45 minute to an hour presentation very easily. Um, but you know, having reviewed these four AI model stock portfolios, I'm sure some of you are probably asking yourself, how can I use these to build a stock, the stock portion of my own portfolio? Well, as John alluded to at the intro, you're not alone. We get this question a lot. And while everyone's situation is unique, AI members have access to useful guides that help, can help them build a portfolio of stocks using a variety of investment strategies. And actually, you can also use these uh, asset allocation models to build portfolios of mutual funds and ETFs as well. The AII asset allocation models offer guideposts to follow, <coughs> offer guideposts to follow depending on the type of investor you are, whether you're aggressive, moderate, or conservative. The key though, is to be honest with yourself when you're assessing your investment time horizon, style, and risk tolerance. So you have to be you know, true to yourself. You have to do that sort of that really hard look in the mirror to get a very good idea of the type of investor you are. Because you might think that you're an aggressive investor, but if you can't stomach a high degree of market volatility, for example, drawdowns as much as 50%, or if you're very close to needing your investment assets, such as your nearing retirement, you may wish to take a more conservative track in order to preserve your cap principle or at least be able to sleep well, sleep well at night. 
Likewise, if you have a longer time horizon, being overly conservative could keep you from reaching your financial goals. So these asset allocation models, which you can find at www.aai.com slash asset hyphen allocation, these models are suggestions. And again, these are suggestions for allocations amongst large, mid and small cap stocks, as well as international stocks and emerging market stocks. In general, the more conservative you are, the lower your overall allocation to stock should be, as well as the greater your focus among within that stock allocation to larger cap stocks. Pardon me for just a moment. Looking at the sizes or market cap of the stocks that are held in each of the AAII model stock portfolios that they typically invest in, we see the typical, this breakdown. You find large and mid cap stocks being well represented among all of the AAII model stock portfolios, with the sole exception being the, the shadow stock portfolio. Because again, this is a micro cap portfolio with stocks with a maximum market cap of 1.2 billion and the current average market capitalization around 400 million. You also find a smattering of small cap stocks in the groups one, three, and four of the SSR portfolio, as well as the VMQ stocks portfolio. So if you're looking to achieve a 20% allocation in large cap stocks, you have a number of choices to choose from across the four different AI model, settles, model stock portfolios. Likewise, if you're more of an aggressive investor, so you're looking to allocate a portion of your stock portfolio to small cap stocks, then obviously the model shadow stock portfolio fills that niche. Given the equity database we use for our screening, the vast majority of stocks held in a the AAII model stock portfolios are US companies. So you would have to look elsewhere for guides uh, related to investing in international stocks or emerging market stocks. To tie things up, I want to discuss the types of investors that may be attracted to the various AAII model stock portfolios. The model shadow stock portfolio is typically for those people that are looking to capitalize on the long-term outperformance of microcap value. Since inception in 1993, I believe the model shadow stock portfolio has been outperforming the the uh, S&P 500 by an average of about five percentage points a year, uh, which over time has led to a significant outperformance. You do need to realize that you need a longer time horizon when you're investing in the model shadow stock portfolio specifically or micro cap value stocks specifically. You also have to have a willingness to accept sharp drawdowns or at least downside volatility. Uh, last year, the portfolio went down I believe around 50% or more during the, the sharp bear market at the beginning of the year. But with that volatility to the downside comes extraordinary upside volatility as well. <coughs> Pardon me, because over the last 12 months ending at the end of April, the shadow stock portfolio is up over 180%. So you have to be able to accept that shorter term volatility, which can be ex extreme, in order to enjoy that long-term outperformance. The VMQ stocks portfolio are for those that are interested in factor-based strategies involving value, momentum, and quality. So if you're someone who believes in factor investing, then the VMQ stocks portfolio is definitely uh, for you. Uh, you should also be aware that you have to be willing to accept a little bit higher turnover uh, because of the momentum factor. Uh, Charles actually uh, has been revising his sell rules based on the momentum factor uh, because he was finding that it was leading to a little bit higher uh, turnover than what he was expecting or, or willing to accept. And over time now that, that uh, turnover has been dipping. But anytime you're using a momentum-based uh, factor, uh, that inevitably will generate uh, some higher uh, turnover. The dividend investing portfolio, as its, div as its name uh, indicates, are for those that are looking for equity, dividend, income, and growth. 
this is a portfolio for people that are looking for lower volatility, uh, as well as willing to accept longer term, and I hate to use this term, underperformance that's associated with it. And we get a lot of questions, people saying, you know, your dividend investing portfolio isn't outperforming, you know, the S&P 500 and something like that. We well, have to understand that the dividend investing portfolio is a, is a portfolio of dividend paying stocks. Uh, by their nature, dividend, dividend paying stocks tend to be uh, less volatile, carry with them lower risk. And just because of the, uh, the fundamental concept of risk and return, if you have lower volatility, then you are, should expect to have uh, somewhat lower returns as well. But this is a portfolio, definitely if someone's looking for a portion of their stock portfolio to be generating uh, dividend income, uh, then these are blue chip stocks uh, that, uh, that fit that need very nicely. And then lastly, the stock superstars report. Uh, this portfolio is for individuals who are looking to mimic the strategies of Wall Street superstars uh, who have outperformed the market in the long run. They're also probably people that are interested in style diversification um, offered by following four distinct strategies. And I'll touch on that a little bit later, but you know, style diversification uh, is basically the same concept as diversifying across different sectors and industries. If you invest using multiple different styles, inevitably one style will be in favor while another might be uh, lagging the market, uh, but then you know, wait a bit of time and you'll, things, you'll see uh, how things uh, will, will balance out or even shift. Uh, so that is uh, one advantage to following a portfolio such as a stock superstars report that does use uh, multiple investment strategies. So finally, uh, as I wrap things up tonight, I wanna highlight the benefits of investing across multiple investment strategies. And as I alluded to just a minute ago, just as investing across different sectors and industries offers diversification benefits, so too does investing using, using differing stock selection methodologies. By blending strategies focused on disparate elements such as value, growth, momentum, uh, earning surprises, earnings estimate revisions, uh, or elements such as growth at a reasonable price, you're boosting your exposure to different, to different strategies that will tend to perform differently depending on where we are in the market cycle. And to reiterate, for example, the model shadow stock portfolio has actually been underperforming the market for several years uh, as, as value strategies had been lagging uh, growth, especially when you were seeing the FANG stocks uh, really carrying the market. But since the, uh, the, mar the bear market of last year, the model shadow stock portfolio has been on fire. Uh, it's been up, uh, it's risen 180% over the 12 months ended April 30th. The same can be said for the different portfolio groups in the SSR portfolio. Uh, the Group 1 O'Neill portfolio was actually, you know, heavily invested in those FANG type stocks last year. So, you know, following the bear market through most of the summer and into early fall, the Group 1 portfolio was going gangbusters uh, and helped the SSR portfolio beat the overall market for the year. But as large cap stocks started to cool in the fall, the Group 3 O'Shaughnessy portfolio, which tends to focus more on out of favor stocks uh, that also tend to be smaller, that portfolio woke and has led the four SSR portfolio groups for the last several months. So, and over that period of time, the SSR portfolio has continued to outperform the overall market. So again, there'll be periods when one investment strategy might perform the market, uh, you know, it might outperform the market over the long term, but no strategy will outperform the market quarter over quarter or year over year. And by following different strategies that don't move in lockstep means you have the increased possibility of one strategy being up while another is down or vice versa. Therefore, therefore uh, sort of lessening the impact uh, of wild market swings. So that concludes uh, my, port my presentation for this evening. Uh, but before I turn things back to John for tonight's Q&A session, I wanna let everyone know about a special offer that we're running for tonight's attendees. Uh, John mentioned our AAI Platinum service uh, at the beginning of the presentation. And for those of you that aren't familiar with it, 
Uh, the Platinum service offers access to the, pre the three premium portfolios, dividend investing, the stock superstars report, and VMQ stocks, as well as AAII's online investment discovery analysis and tracking tool, A Plus Investors, A Plus Investor. And as a thank you for all of you sitting in tonight, we're offering a six month platinum subscription for only $99. And this is 75% off the cost if you were to subscribe to each product separately over six months. You can sign up for the special rate by following the URL in the slide, which is invest.aaii.com forward slash member hyphen flash hyphen sale. I'll leave this uh, slide up for now uh, and I will then uh, throw it back to John for your questions. Well, there's uh, lots of questions here, Wayne. Uh, perhaps I'll give you a, an easy one to begin with, uh, <laughs> since the information I think is in your slides. Uh, but I did a quick compilation here. Um, a member is asking, if, what are the start dates of each of the four portfolios mentioned? And looking at your slides, I, I think I have the AAI, AAII model shadow stock portfolio as uh, starting in 93. Yes. Uh, the um, stock superstars report inception of 2002 correct the dividend investing uh 2012 and vmq mm -hmm. 2018. that is correct and, uh, that is available on the slides and you should be able to download the slides uh, i know that question came up as well in the handouts um it should be a control area on your uh your go to webinar uh, panel that allows you to download the slides um and uh, I guess this is a question, perhaps it was, uh, it was the first question tonight. So um, you know, whether or not uh, you can answer this, I don't know, but uh, maybe there is an answer to it. Uh, which portfolio was best suited for a quick return on investment? Oh, <laughs> um, you know, obviously past performance, no guarantee of future performance. But if you look for stocks that probably move have a greater level of volatility both to the upside and the downside and that's a caveat uh, is the uh, group one portfolio of the SSR portfolio uh, these are stocks that are, are high growth high price momentum uh, we're trying to catch them while they're hopefully breaking out of a uh, charting pattern will take off so you know we've invested over the last year we've invested in stocks that have gone up 60 70 80 percent uh, over the first uh, few months. Uh, we also just uh, had to jettison a stock sleep sleep number that fell uh, roughly 20% in the first month that we owned it. Uh, so again, that uh, those those high returns come with high volatility. Uh, so you have to be willing to to accept that. But generally speaking, your uh, the VMQ stock portfolio as well um, has done very well, but it depends on the market environment. Uh, the shadow stock portfolio up 180% in a year. <laughs> and that's because there's been a market rotation uh, back to small cap value. So, you know, it, really you can, the answer to this is depending on uh, the period you look at and where we are in the market cycle. That's probably the best answer to that question. Very good. And um, uh, here's a, since you're the uh, managing the uh, SSR uh, strategy, what is your opinion on using the 10 stocks of each of the SSR strategy, 40 stocks total as a portfolio? Uh, you know, you obviously are getting a very significant diversification. Um, you know, realistically, I don't think there's anyone out there that's invested in all 40 of those stocks. Um, the main reason why we, we go with the 10 uh, is because we know not everyone is going to invest in all of these stocks, but we offer a, a good enough uh, collection of stocks in each of the four strategies that people can build a diversified portfolio even from a subset of that. Um, but I would be shocked if someone were to raise their hand and say that I'm invested in all 40, uh, to, to be brutally honest. And here, here's a good question as far as the mechanics of uh, investing in the shadow stock portfolio. So one of the shadow stock portfolio rules is that market cap, when you, bu when you buy it, is between 30 million and 400 million. After a stock's market cap has grown to three times that 400 million, 1.2 billion, it is sold. However, I see that Hibbit Sports is still in the shadow stock portfolio. 
and its market cap exceeds 1.2 billion. Right now it's 1.34. Why wasn't it sold when it exceeded 1.2 billion? Am I missing something or misunderstanding the sell rules? Uh, you aren't misunderstanding the sell rules. That is uh, sort of the hard and fast sell rule. Um, you know, I've stepped away a little bit from the shadow stock portfolio over the last several months, but uh, you know when. Well, the when key I was is, born, I think, in that case, I think Wayne, is that correct? It's, it's, it's we only do a review at the quarter, so yeah, it, that's, that's a good point. Thank you. It's the the whole notion, uh, you know, when Jim was setting up the portfolio is he he understood that these are, are relatively illiquid stocks and uh it didn't he didn't really want to trade them he wanted to really have uh more uh rules that are derived by the cycle of companies earnings and uh so in that context uh the the market cap the uh the the negative earnings uh the price to book those are all assessed uh typically you know, right after the earnings cycle is done. So, you know, right now we're 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 almost getting to the end of the earnings cycle. We'll we'll do the review of the shadow stock portfolio uh, right at the end of uh, May, beginning of June. Uh, we'll reassess what the current market cap and uh, price to price to book deciles are, and see if we need to adjust anything. And then we'll we'll do our cutoffs off that. So you, you're you're correct about your assessment. Now again. One of the other points that came up is that, you know, with the shadow stock uh, portfolio is that, uh, you know, we, we do the alerts after we do the, the sales or transactions. But one of the things to keep in mind with the shadow stock portfolio is the rules are very transparent. Uh, and uh, so basically, you can either follow the rules by using the qualified list online in the stock ideas area or the shadow stock ideas or the qual and the notes. Some people use Stock Investor Pro. To make a decision, so anybody could follow the rules exactly, um, as far as that's concerned. Yeah, that John definitely hit the nail on the head, though. It's uh, it's, um, and that was one of the things that Jim was trying to do with the shadow stock portfolio as well. Was something that didn't need to be constantly monitoring, is you know realistically, you know, eight to ten hours a quarter to manage this portfolio, and that's the uh, it's the uh, it's the review cycle, uh, of that quarterly review cycle. And here's another kind of a technical question, but you know, why do you only look at the NYSE when it comes to establishing the the deciles for market cap and price to book? Why not and also invest and look in the and Nasdaq stocks? Uh, well, when the uh, <clears throat> when that research took place, it was basically there, there was no Nasdaq at the time, so the NYSE was the primary uh, uh, exchange. So uh, just that was. Sticking with that, you know, from an apples to apples standpoint, uh, that was that when you look at that was, I think the, the back testing period started in 1963. Mm -hmm. Obviously, by the end of the back testing period, the NASDAQ was in existence, but uh, it's to uh, to keep that uh, same universe uh, static over time. But then they, they, what happens though is I think uh, the, the, the break points are determined using the NYSE stocks, but then those break points are applied to any stock that's traded anywhere. So if the market good, cap, yeah. we don't exclude, you know, we include NY, we include NASDAQ stocks, for example, in the shadow stock portfolio. We're just using the NYSC as the kind of the benchmark to establish the decile ranges for price to book and market cap as well. Is there a tool to show how the portfolios are diversified over various industries? Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, you know the, the main focus of this presentation for this evening was the model shadow stock portfolio, um, but we uh, alluded to the A plus uh, investor product, which is part of our platinum service that we're giving the offer for tonight. And with that, we have the My Portfolio tool that you can enter in your portfolio, uh, and it will give you the breakdown uh, across uh, sectors. Uh, so you can use that tool to do uh, sector diversification uh, analysis. Um, do you ever recommend ETFs or mutual funds that substitute for the styles in question? Sometimes I get too busy to in, indulge in my investing hobby. I like to smooth the ride out, yet capture the, the market concept. Uh, to my knowledge, outside of uh, funds that would sort of mimic uh, a, a, a dividend investing strategy similar to what we do with dividend investing, I'm not aware of any mutual funds out there that mimic 
uh, any of the four uh, groups of SSR, uh, the model shadow stock portfolio, mainly because of what I alluded to at the beginning. Uh, these are two illiquid stocks for a, a money manager, for a, a fund of any size to be investing in. Uh, and there are some factor oriented funds and ETFs out there. But again, I don't think any of them would, would closely mimic what we're, what Charles is doing with the VMQ stocks portfolio. So I guess in that context, you might just simply try to, we, I know when we present our asset allocation models on the AI.com, we do provide listings of uh, benchmark uh, funds and ETFs. So you might use those as your, as your core holdings. And then uh, if you need just a little bit of color, if you want to do a little bit of uh, uh, pick up some small cap value, you then might use you know, one of these portfolio tools to do that. And, but have your core holdings and index funds that are, are mentioned on our allocation area. Interesting question here. So um, I, you know, put you on the spot here, Wayne. I told you I was going to stump you. Uh, and our members are, are trying hard to do that here. Um, <laughs> the gentleman mentioned here that, much. <laughs> no, that's not true now. Uh, that the uh, you notice that the uh, the the Buffett um, uh, strategies are that we have the stock screens have a pretty good performance. Uh, any reason why they didn't make the the cut on the SSR uh, portfolio service? Uh, we also we always have uh, strategies in our back pockets. Um, you know, when we uh, groups one and four have been part of the SSR portfolio since the very beginning, the O'Neill uh, and NEF uh, strategies. Um, you know, those um, even on an annualized basis, obviously they've been in the portfolio the longest, so their uh, their cumulative returns are are the best. But even on an annualized basis, both of their returns are, are extraordinary. Um, we then, uh, you know, we were ultimately then trying to find uh, methodologies that have a relatively low correlation with each other or that weren't much overlap in the, uh, the types of factors or strategies that they followed. So that's how we used uh, David Dremen, whose track record has been very good looking at, uh, you know, smaller sized, I'm sorry, larger sized, um, sort of beaten down, underappreciated stocks uh, that uh, tend to benefit uh, more, much more so from positive earning surprises. So that's why we're using the Dremen strategy for group two. Uh, and then uh, our back testing had found that uh, the O'Shaughnessy approach that we use uh, for group three, his factors uh, had also done very well uh, over the long term. So that's not to say that there aren't other strategies out there that are also worthwhile in investing. Uh, we had four to choose from uh, and we were trying to find uh, good, strong, long-term performers that had a relatively low correlation with each other. But we always uh, are monitoring those in case we have to uh, uh, do a substitution somewhere down the line. Interesting. Um, in terms of, you know, the given you have all these different strategies, um, is there a single location for members to get the performance information on those? And the gentleman is wondering, you know, um, you know, looking at like, say even like within the SSR superstars portfolio, you know, which of those four has performed best in the previous five years or, or, or 10 year period? Uh, actually, we were having this discussion the other day, uh, having a central location for performance. I don't believe we have that even at our platinum uh, dashboard, but that's something that I have on a notes to do. We do have performance information that's accessible to all people. You don't have to be a subscriber. Uh, a breakdown of performance uh, for the individual portfolios uh, at their respective websites. Um, but then at the, I know specifically at the SSR website, uh, we have performance breakdowns over the last, uh, you know, last week, month, one year, three year, five year, uh, 10, 15, if, if, the, that, if the individual portfolio has gone back that far. And I'm seeing a number of members who are confused by the platinum offer. And uh, I'm seeing questions like, does it include all of the segments? How, what's the time period? So if, as I understand it, it's, it's, it's a six month trial. It includes right. access over those six months to um, the SSR, VMQ, uh, dividend investing, as well as A plus investor. Now, chances are you're a member already, 
So you already have access to the shadow stock portfolio. Um, and then, so you have access to all of those as a member. It would then renew after that six month period into the, the price. And uh, is it, is it, I am gonna, is it, is it 490 uh, a year? I think, I for, think it uh, is for regular members. I think live members get a break on that. And this is a, an offer that's there for uh, people who are, haven't tried out the Platinum product first. So if you're currently a Platinum subscriber, I don't believe you can add it on to your subscription. But hopefully the answer is uh, the couple of questions that we had there. So it's a six month uh, attempt to uh, to try all the different portfolios and see if any of them make sense for you. Uh, one other thing I guess that, that, that came up, I think perhaps might be worth pointing out as a reference is that you know we, we've over the last year have held many open houses uh, describing each of these services individually. I did a quick scan on our website. So if you go to our website and click on community and within community, go to our, 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 our webinar area, we have an archive of past uh, open homes that examined these services. So for example, uh, we did a, a VMQ presentation on February 10th of this year. Uh, SSR, we did actually quite a few presentations on SSR. We did one for each of the individual uh, strategies over uh, anywhere from July to August of last year. And most recently, we did an SSR open house on December 2nd of 2020. Uh, dividend investing, a number of webinars as well. Uh, last one, I believe, was November 11th. And uh, we did a in-depth shadow stock presentation back in July 22nd of 2020. So we'll be sure to include those in our show notes. But if you do want to get more uh, detailed information, and get a presentation like this on those individual services. Uh, just you know, go to our, uh, our archive of webinars, and you'll have that information there. And I believe there's an SSR one in two weeks. I, you know, there you go. So if you want, you know, <laughs> you want to get want to get the lowdown, get your questions ready. Uh, Wayne will be here, ready to answer them. So, uh, uh, in terms of uh, interesting, what are the three differences or unique points on? AAIs can slim. Uh, unique, probably relative, maybe to our other strategies. Okay. Uh, I, I will. That's a I, I, question. I'm sorry. I thought maybe I know you're the can slim expert here, so I thought. No, I mean, if no, I mean, if, if I mean, well, can slim in general um, is looking for stocks that uh, I mean. What William O'Neill did is he he back tested, he looked at stocks over roughly a 50 year period and he identified those stocks that had the biggest uh, price uh, explosions. And what he did is he found that all of these stocks exhibited uh, these uh, seven can slim, or well, actually seven can slim elements prior to those big stock run ups. Uh, and that includes uh, explosive quarter over quarter over quarter. Uh, quarterly year-over-year -year growth, I'll get this right, quarterly year-over-year -year growth, year-over-year um, -year annual growth, um, as well as um, breaking out of some significant charting pattern. Uh, and so you're having, uh, O'Neill very much as a technician, so he wants to, you're basically jumping on these high growth stocks right when they're breaking out of very favorable charting patterns that uh, then the, the the demand, basically the the, the quote unquote program trading that's generated when these uh, breakouts take place uh, will uh, boost the stock price even higher. So this is the CanSlim strategy. The Group One uh, portfolio uh, is looking very much uh, at high growth in earnings uh, as well uh, as uh, strong price momentum. So um, in terms of um... Here, sorry. Uh, one gentleman here had a very, very specific question and observation about the shadow stock portfolio. And he's been following it closely now, uh, daily for several months. And he sees three ways to begin with this portfolio. You could either uh, buy all of the stocks in the portfolio, uh, but then understand that some of the positions you'll be buying might be sold in the nearer term because they might be on earnings probation or hitting a value limit or size limit. That's one approach, so buy everything now. Uh, alternatively, you could just simply uh, buy the ones that are currently qualifying or have uh, no earnings probation, have a little bit lower um, uh, you know, valuation point to market cap levels and, and build your portfolio over time. 
that's approach number two. Or you could buy uh, Stock Investor Pro, he said here, and, and you know, go ahead and run your own analysis. Uh, any recommendations as far as uh, you know, one versus the other? Uh, I mean, they are all, uh, I think, valid. Uh, I would say definitely if you're starting with the, if you're looking to invest in individual shadow stocks, the first place I would begin would be those current holdings uh, that are still uh, meeting the initial selection criteria. Uh, and then, you know, you can ramp up that uh, over time. Uh, but if you firmly believe in the shadow stock methodology, you don't have to worry about what, uh, you know, John uh, is doing based on his analysis. You know, you have these clear cut quantitative rules based buy and sell uh, instructions that you can, you know, with using Stock Investor Pro uh, or other some, some other fundamental uh, screener, you could be identifying these stocks and follow the, the rules that we've uh, explicitly outlaid for you to in order to do that. So I would say those would probably be the, the of the three, those would be the two strategies that I would follow. Very good. Uh, a gentleman here noticed that we haven't really, you know, we don't cover the level three uh, passive portfolio that frequently. Uh, any any uh, color on that? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, well, I guess I'll answer that question since, you know, I. Uh, what we found with the level three portfolio, we, we we covered it. We're covering it basically once a year now. It doesn't really change that much, and it wasn't too much information to provide about it. So we last covered it in September of 2020, and again we'll be covering it again this year. Uh, but uh, for those of you who are interested, the level three passive portfolio is uh, a, a collection of ETFs that uh, Jim Clunan, the founder of AI, selected. And it, it, has, it, takes, it takes sort of the, it tries to take a little bit of a, um, a tilt on some of the typical market levels. So as opposed to investing in the market cap weighted S&P, uh, it, it invests in the equally weighted SPY. Uh, and the same is true of the market cap uh, of, 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 of the mid cap levels and also a little bit of small cap value. So it's taking just it's taking the, the classic allocations and applying um, a slight tilt to some factors that have shown to have good long term performance relative to the uh, overall marketplace. So uh, if you go to our website, if you click on the AI journal, and within there, you could get a, 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 a uh, index listing of all past articles. You'll see access to past level three passive portfolio articles on our website. Sorry, Wayne, uh, mm -hmm. taking over your questions there. No worries. Um, a member here had a question as far as um, the the are the factors that are used in vmq the same as the factors that are used in a plus investor and the question is there because the descriptions seem to be a little bit uh, briefer in one service versus the other uh yes the the uh quality value and momentum grades that we are used in vmq are uh the uh the value, momentum, and, and quality grades that are also used for A-plus investor. Uh, and then uh, built on that then are the estimate revisions uh, and growth grades as well to give you the five-factor grades uh, in A-plus. And yes, uh, we have, uh, actually I have made note of that, um, that yes, you get a, a probably a more detailed analysis of the grades with VMQ uh, relative to A-plus. Uh, and that is something that is on a, on a, on a to-do list to address uh, in the future. But yes, uh, that observation is correct. There's a, two related questions here. Um, it has to do with getting alerts and when transactions are held. So for the various portfolios that you discussed today, <clears throat> Wayne, how are members and subscribers notified of when stocks are added or removed to the portfolios? Um, is it email? Uh, do you have to log in to see that information? Uh, so, the information for all transactions across all of the model stock portfolios, whether that's DI, SSR, VMQ, or the model shadow stock portfolio, all of that information is communicated via email uh, or the website. Um, the uh, 
alerts for the shadow stock uh, transactions go out after those trades uh, have been made. Um, those aren't a fixed date. Normally you'll find them, you know, uh, early May, August, November, and January. Probably have that wrong. I think you're just off a little bit. I think it'll be early June. Yeah. Early, early June will be the next set of uh, trans okay. rebalancing. So, so, but those, uh, that's how it's communicated there. That's also posted uh, on the on the website. Um, but then for DI, SSR, and VMQ uh, alerts, uh, well, I take that back. SSR and DI buy transactions are announced uh, in the monthly newsletter as well on the website, as well as in the email that goes out uh, at the time that the monthly newsletter is published. Uh, Charles uh, VMQ doesn't have an actual monthly newsletter. So those are more done uh, in real time. Uh, he's very transparent as far as alerting people when things are potentially entering into uh, uh, sort of probation period or whatnot. But those would be communicated um, in his uh, Friday email uh, as well as posted on the VMQ website. So in summary, then, typically um, the shadow stock portfolio transactions are typically quarterly. Uh, yes. DI and SSR are typically monthly. Uh, and VMQ is, 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 it can be weekly, but it, the turnover isn't, it's not every week, it, 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 but it is That's typically on the, on the Friday of the week when we get an alert. That's correct. Um, are there any technical indicators used at a minimum for entry or exit points? Uh, for the group one can slim strategy, uh, I do look at charts. Uh, you know, the M of can slim is refers to market. Uh, and so he looks, uh, O'Neill looks at the trend in the general market. Uh, so if the market is not in a general uptrend, he does not buy stocks, but then when you're looking at individual stocks, he is also looking for stocks that are breaking out of, you know, he's, he loves the cup with handle pattern. Uh, you know, any any stock that has developed a, a, a distinguishable quote unquote base pattern that is breaking out to new highs, that's the type of chart pattern that he's looking for. And those are the types of chart patterns that I also try to look for uh, when adding stocks to the group one SSR portfolio. And I know we're getting a, a little, running a little bit long here, so I'll, I'll just ask a couple more questions before we wrap up. Uh, how many stocks are needed at a minimum to be adequately diversified? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of research out there. I would say, you know, 10 to 20 seems to be uh, a, a good sweet spot. Um, you know, anything above 20, the the your diversification benefits, uh, your your the the marginal diversification benefit drops off significantly. Um, so, you know, I would say uh, a 20 stock uh, portfolio that is truly invested, uh, truly diversified. So you're investing across market capitalizations, um, sectors and industries, uh, as well as investment styles uh, should give you uh, sufficient diversification. And uh, I have a, a couple of emails or a couple of requests here rather to expand a little bit upon the Stock Investor Pro tool and how that can be used potentially as an alternative to all these? Uh, Stock Investor Pro, so, so sort of to, to put things in two camps, the model shadow stock portfolio, uh, DI, SSR, and VMQ, uh, these are services for people that are looking to invest in individual stocks, but might want to have a more directed, uh, you know, pathway uh, laid out for them. Uh, Whereas Stock Investor Pro, which is AII's fundamental stock screening and research database program, uh, that is more for the do-it-yourselfer. Uh, it is a database of 6,300 companies with an extensive collection of financial statement data, ratios, multiples, et cetera. Uh, so there's a great database tool, but really the heart of it is the screening engine that you can screen those 6,300 companies on roughly 2,200 data points per company uh, to identify stocks that meet very specific fundamental criteria. So for example, you know, you wanna look for stocks that have year over year earnings growth over the last five years. 
uh, you know, stocks that have a PE ratio that's only 50% of the market or its sector or its industry. Uh, so you can create your own very specific screening criteria uh, with this tool. So it's definitely, I think, geared more towards the do-it-yourselfer uh, who, you know, might have developed your own strategy or looking to develop that strategy. And you can build that and test it using Stock Investor Pro. Okay. So you could, you could, if you want to, you could build all these screens yourself, but it's the do-it-yourselfer versus having everything done for you with explanations as to why. And I, I follow up to that. Uh, Stephen is here is requesting that you do a, a live demonstration as a webinar um, and one of these webinar Wednesdays and sooner rather than later. So that's a, a, a vote being uh, presented here. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to end the, I, I, there's a number of, uh, of uh, members here who are giving you kudos on a good presentation, Wayne, and I'll end it on thank this particular uh, statement here. Uh, thank you all. Have been a lifetime member for about three decades. And tell younger people they should sign up to uh, as well. So he says good night. So uh, thank you, Jack. Thank you very much, Jack. And thank you, John. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, to uh, for attending this evening. And uh, I guess we'll throw it back to Ryan for. Uh, for one last slide. Absolutely. You, so, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, Wayne and John, for uh, staying up and, and presenting this and, and moderating as well. Uh, thanks to all of you for watching and listening. Um, we do have an uh, exciting uh, lineup of upcoming webinars, which you can register for and learn more about at aai.com slash webinars. Um, we, we host a number of these every Wednesday night, uh, 7.30 Central, 8, 8.30 Eastern. Um, next week, look forward to the Individual Investor Show. Uh, we'll talk about three segments there. Uh, look at the first cut list, which uh, comprises leisure-oriented stocks. Uh, uh, you know, we'll be talking about uh, screening for dividend stocks, as well as uh, AAII Investment Club uh, privacy concerns. Uh, as uh, mentioned earlier by John, uh, we'll ha be having a, a webinar on investing like a stock superstar, the SSR Open House, where you can answer, uh, ask your questions about SSR. Uh, and that'll be hosted by Wayne uh, June 2nd. Uh, the week after will be uh, another individual investor show. We'll be covering uh, stock splits, robo advisors, and how to use the My Screens area of the website. Uh, that'll be June 9th, and then uh, on June 23rd, uh, we'll be uh, hosting uh, another individual show where we'll be uh, covering a uh, step in the wealth building process about picking the right investments. Uh, another first cut list of large growth funds and uh, convertibles. Uh, we we will have future webinar content uh, for you to look forward to. Uh, on that page, you'll also find our full archive of shows and uh, links and uh, presentation handouts. And uh, just as a reminder, uh, we will be having a recording of this one available tomorrow on our YouTube channel, as well as uh, on the webinars page itself. Uh, with that- yeah, if Actually, I'm not mistaken. Just uh, I do believe June 30th might be a, a platinum uh, oh, webinar. So. Sure. Yeah, uh, couldn't, fit, <laughs> couldn't fit on the slide, but yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, all that great content to look forward to. Um, with that, we wish you good health and good wealth. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night.